Welcome everyone. We are so happy that you have taken ownership of your development as the e-champion or as the part of the committee at your school. We are really, really happy that you are here. Special welcome to all of you from MNED and MZ. Yesterday, Bradley shared with us about what is our responsibilities that was i think there it was a combination of bradley and melissa what is it that we're supposed to be doing as e champions because we year with the champion we year with the ict champion we year with the edtech champion we year with the e champion but what are we supposed to be doing you are the guy or lady let's not be sexist about this, who will be seeing, having the overarching view. You have the bird's eye view at your school about what is happening where the ed tech is concerned, how it is organized, how it's run, how it's managed, as well as how it integrates on school level where our teachers are concerned. So you would be the on-site um, user support. You would be assisting the teachers and the learners, admin staff, a wise, a bit of advice. Get a committee, learnership committee, leadership committee, learners. Have them form a little committee so that you don't have to be running out of your class assisting people. Then you've got your little committee going there with your, so it's like an extra, you know, these after school programs, so they belong to that group. And they would then be the ones that can go and help teachers an extension of you. That is part of your upskilling that you'd be doing to learners as well as to the, the teachers as well, right? And then obviously there's resources at school. The buck would be stopping with you and the SMT. You need to know what's happening at the school. Where is everything? Where it's being stored? Who has it? How many of what is at your school? And obviously that is on your assets register, right? The important thing about the e-learning is that whole integration that happens where you would be assisting teachers as far as possible. But remember, you do have the e-learning advisors in your corner as well to assist um, with the school and the planning of the integration of technology and pedagogy for the enhancement of lessons and engaging our students and enriching the lessons as well. The, as the e-champion, you would have to know what projects have been rolled out at your school. So all of this was spoken about in depth yesterday, and it is good that we have the committee. They, you work together. It is not all about you. Okay, so work well with the committee. Who is doing the lab and who's keeping admin and who's contacting? You could be contacting the, the, the help desk. You could have someone in the committee doing that. So that is a brief recap of the responsibilities that you have as the e champion. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. Timo Orensen, the subject advisor, Metro North Education District. Um, my co-pilot, Terence, I uh, think he's just inside in the cabin of the plane, but he will attend uh, soon. So here we go. Coding and robotics orientation. Um, yes, the state of coding and robotics in the Western Cape Education Department from 2022 up until 2024. So here we have our little robot. Uh, just to show you, our robot is uh, full of actions and full of uh, boogie woogies. That's that's the way we need to go uh, uh, these days with coding and robotics. So yeah, thank you. So the number and types of schools piloting uh, coding and robotics uh, from grade R to three, we have thirty-two schools in the province. Special schools are four, multi-grade schools two, and then grade seven, we have 111 schools across the districts in our province. 
four special schools, four, four schools are special schools of this 111 schools. Grade four, four to six, our intermediate phase, we have 32 schools, special schools four and multi-grade schools four. Grade eight and nine, learn to code, microbit, 37 schools piloting, and two of those 37 are special schools. Now, this is very fresh and warm from the oven. And this was just released by Mr. Ashri Don, um, our uh, manager at head office. So uh, first on the program term one, we have a first tech challenge regional at Pruti Heights, and that's, that, that was already the 27th of January. Then first tech challenge national, Parklands College, 17 February. Learn to code uh, project launch, Online at happened 25 January. The CETA competition, primary and high schools. Uh, phase one, write an essay, 26 Jan up until 16 Feb. Phase two, build a prototype, 26 Feb up, up until 23 uh, June, 23rd of June. And that's uh, provincial and national. First on the uh, program for uh, term one, is an online coding and robotics uh, curriculum orientation. And, uh, the date will be communicated. And then six on the program is coding and robotics power hour in Tessin online. That's in, um, that's in the 7th of Feb. And then CTLI intermediate phase and senior phase uh, coding and robotics integrated or integration courses running at CTLI. That will start from March. Remember, there was a two a couple of sessions last year, uh, also presented by me, Terence, and um, Mr. Jonathan Fries and Ashley Don. Then um, term two, coding and robotics power hour intercin online. That is 10 April. Uh, ninth on the program is learn to code, train the trainer, and that's 20 April. And then um, term three, uh, coding and robotics, power hour, intersin online, 17 July, intersin coding and robotics, provincial coding and robotics competition, 10 August. And then there's a coding and robotics conference coming up at CTLI, a big, big one, bigger than DBE's one that we attended these past three days in Joburg. Uh, 31st of August. Term four is a coding and robotics um, power hour intersin online. That's the 9th of October. And then Learn to Code Expo at Prutia Heights, 12th October. Uh, last one on the program, intersin coding and robotics, grade four to seven, lesson preparations, 21st uh, of October till 24th of October. Yes. So then we have a CETA CSR robotic challenge, right? So there is proposed timelines, and this is also fresh from the oven, also released by Mr. Ashrik Don. The 26th of Jan, uh, the uh, essay uh, phase starts, and then by the 16th of February, the essay phase ends. 19th of uh, February, there is an ed education starts and the education ends. Adjudication, sorry for the pronunciation there. And then I'm sure Gail is laughing. <laughs> and then 23 or 23rd of February, consolidation of results. And then uh, announcing the winners will be the 23rd of February as well. And then purchase and delivery of equipment. Uh, 26 Feb until 24th of March. And then the final national phase starts the 25th of March. Or, or yeah. Then the 26th of uh, June arrival at the venue. And then 26, 25th to 26th of June the set up demo day and prize giving. And then the 27th we have our final national phase that ends. So that's the timeline. So just to give you an overview, quick, quick, 
of uh, the state of coding and robotics in the Western Cape Education Department from 2022 till 2024. So in the foundation phase, DBE coding and robotic pilot school teachers participated in the UNISA MOOC 1 and UNISA MOOC 2 training. WC to, to be complement the above is conducting an ongoing teacher development where teachers participated in online content and skills development workshops, uh, followed by face to face uh, sessions for practical and consultation. Then um, the provincial core group consisting of district foundation phase advisors developed uh, activities aligned to the strands in the draft curriculum to empower teachers by showing how integration of coding and robotics into language, mathematics and life skills can be enhanced current teaching and learning practice. And here we're still re re referring to the draft policy, but soon, the good news is soon, um, the draft policy are currently provisionally approved. So that's excellent news. And in the approved curriculum, and this is in the pipeline for the for this coming year, the approved curriculum will then be piloted second term 2024 uh, from grade R to three. And then next year, we'll continue 2024 with the grade fours. And then and we gradually, that's an ongoing process, 2026, the grade fives. And so we go on. And that's the approved curriculum policy that's going to be piloted. Then um, to move on, uh, Intersen, uh, Intersen Intermediate Phase and Grade 8 pilot teachers attended the 40-hour orientation session. That was an online session. CTLI courses were already developed. The intermediate and senior phase subcommittees developed courses for integrating uh, coding and robotics with natural sciences and coding and robotics with technology. The courses were presented already next year, uh, last year, and um, the teachers attended. They enjoyed the sessions. We made videos. They had fun. And this year is our second round to present these courses with teachers. So we ask teachers, all teachers, to attend these courses. Then the Learn to Code project, the British Council funded the Microbit Club in collaboration with TBE. Sorry, with TBE. Uh, well, and this will result in 44 coding uh, and robotic clubs that's already been established in the Western Cape. Training used using a blended model. The clubs were established and are fully functional. Master trainers have been trained at advanced level. So these clubs have been uh, been established already. They are fully functional. But at some schools, they are uh, clubs not functional. So what the coordinators of the different districts did is they um, supplied a... a Statistics to Asterix Don of certain schools that's not fully functional. So we'll rope in um, and schools may apply uh, to, uh, to, to act as pilot schools. And we apply from district level to head office level and to national uh, department of basic education. OK. Just just on that then. Um, just to give you a broad overview of the British Council and coding and computational thinking uh, project for grade eight and nine learners, the Department of Basic Education has partnered with the British Council to implement the coding and computational thinking program to enhance digital thinking and computational thinking in the senior phase. So this project specifically targeted grade eight and nine learners, the aim is to increase the number of learners opting for CAT and IT by introducing them to coding, computational thinking, and robotics. The WC has decided to establish coding and robotic clubs at the identified schools as extramural. Um, then the project will be managed by the CAT IT DCES, GED coding and robotic um, coordinator, and um, e-learning project manager. DBE will perform an oversight role and um, 44 clubs was or were already established in the Western Cape. Uh, each club will be encouraged to have uh, 44 learners, 44 grade eight and nine learners. 50% of these learners um, that were selected in most cases were females. 
So the provincial and national competitions were launched already and schools and learners participated already. Then um, the selected schools. In each district, we had selected schools of learners and they received the microbit V2 device, guides and detailed lesson plans and activities. British Council monitored and will still in 2024-2025 monitor the project and gather data from participating schools to determine the impact of this project. For example, on learner confidence, the attitude towards coding, as well as the intent to pursue a career in the IT industry. WCD Microbit master trainers are ready to pass on the expertise. Schools receive the correspondence. And so this process is up and running. And in cases with schools not actively involved, new schools can apply to the district to replace the existing pilot schools. And that I already mentioned to you. Um, and what I can just add is the following that the current training manual, this is also very fresh from the oven. Remember I said we attended a pilot uh, project at, um, uh, sorry, a uh, conference at DBE. So um, fresh from the oven is that the current training manual will be updated with new cohorts to a more advanced level for coding and robotics. I'm referring now to the, and also very important that the grade sevens um, uh, will be included into this uh, pilot for the uh, Learn to Code project. So that's fresh from the oven. That didn't exist. Uh, grade sevens were not part of the Learn to Code process for uh, uh, 2023. Um, then Mr. Ashwick Don compiled online uh, support material. So what most district coordinators for coding and robotics have done is they shared a link. And with this link, because remember, we are busy with the pilot schools, but outside the pilot, there are more schools that want to join. They want to start with this learn to code microbit project. They want to do it as an extramural. Some schools build it in the curriculum with a, with a, within the timetable. So Ashley Don supplied us with a, uh, support, online support material. So there's two online uh, training uh, sessions of two hours each. The manual is there, the lessons are there. So some schools are actively engaged, busy with coding and robotics, with the microbit project, but they're not part of the pilot. So some uh, principals ask, why can't we, you include us? Why can't you include my school? So what we say here is, we remember the microbit as a virtual platform. So when you code the, the microbit, the actual robot, uh, the robot appears on a virtual space on your screen. So here we supply you with virtual uh, support material. So you may start uh, with this project. That was just very short. Then this is just innovation to learn to code with the microbit online training workshop. Director at GET in collaboration with the DEBE and British Council already set established 44 microbit coding and robotic high school clubs in the Western province. The participating schools were established and finalized with online training workshops and on site practical sessions. The objective of the Learn to Code with the microbit training workshops introduce the Make Code editor, learn how to use uh, Make Code blocks. Create your first program, introduce the microbit controller, setting up your microbit, connecting your microbit to, to the computer, using tutorials, exploring the LEDs in the microbit and introduction to variables and introduction to conditionals. And remember I said, we're going to expand this uh, uh, training manual this year. Um, then these are just the schools that were selected and some of the schools are not uh, actively engaged or busy at, at uh, we discovered at in 2023. So that's why I said there's our schools that may apply to the district coordinator, then to aid office to be part of this project. Um, E-learning submission, a submission by the Directorate of E-learning to establish coding and robotic clubs throughout the province is in process and it's already existing in the province. 
Then I'm almost done. The REACH network, robotics, e-education, and coding hubs, a network developed in collaboration with the Cape Town Science Center, will provide support and training for establishing and supporting coding and robotic clubs throughout the province. Um, then each district, or there's a, a coding and robotics provincial mancom, and then each district uh, has its own committee, and those are fully in place and functional. And then this is just an overview, a very short overview of the uh, coding and robotics. Coding is an engineering. Uh, learners are introduced to the fundamentals of mechanical and electrical engineering systems and circuits that are used in robotics. Um, the robotics strand primarily using the engineering design process and infuses the concepts of computational thinking in the process. So currently, uh, popular on the market are the uh, Arduino and uh, Microbit. Um, and then types of microbits, I already mentioned, is most, uh, one of the most used platforms is Arduino and, mic and Microbit. We will permit the Microbit on the left side and the Arduino on the right side. Both microcontrollers have their own processes, memory, and input and output connections. But I'm sure Terence have a brilliant presentation for you. So my colleague is up next. So he'll support you with the uh, with the finer detail of coding and robotics. Ladies and gentlemen, line-based coding and block-based coding, that's the coding language uh, that, that is, will be presented in, but those are the most common uh, language-based coding languages that we will use, but nothing prevents you to dig deeper at your school. Um, then we as district officials, principals, teachers, and learners are extremely excited about coding and robotics and the implementation thereof in our classrooms at our schools. So we need to prepare our learners for current and future careers in this country. So this is the emphasis is placed on future proof our learners. Nobody walk ahead, nobody walk behind. We all walk this road together. Um, Right, so good afternoon, everybody. Okay, uh, I, I'm going to try and do justice within the half an hour. Uh, I'm, I don't think I'm going to be able to do so because, you know, I might be talking to only certain people. And, you know, the idea is just to share with you what is currently happening in Metro Central and, and of course, in most of the metropoles. Okay, so what I do with my schools in Metro Central uh, these are the aspects of coding and robotics, which is covered uh, when I engage with my teachers for primary as well as high school. OK, Timo uh, said and shared information regarding the, the, the various apps and resources that we are currently using in the, in the metro calls, especially with regards to the rich robot. And then, of course, the micro bit and, and a bit of the Arduino, which I, I can elaborate on. Uh, I'll also be able to draw a comparison between the microbit as well as the Arduino for you. Uh, and, and as Timo had said earlier, you know, you then make your decision in terms of how you would like to introduce coding and robotics to your school. Uh, I cover a bit of drone uh, technology as well, and then very, very important, you know, for especially for our, our, our lesser privileged schools, you know, uh, the introduction of 3D printing. Uh, just to just to share with you in terms of there is a slide that you're currently looking at in terms of the 3D printing that, that we are basically developing and hoping to also introduce into our pilot schools. Is and the reason for that is because some of the resources uh, that are supplied, especially and I'm talking here about microbit. Uh, and these resources for the focus schools have been supplied by British Council, but they don't have all the resources. So uh, they they give you the the firmware, okay? They give you the the hard the hardware as well. But in terms of developing automation and robots and so forth, uh, I think we're going to have to bring on board 3D printing, okay? And just to give you an idea of 
of what 3D printing is about. I'm hoping that you can hear that. If you can't hear, uh, because I can't hear anything on my side, but hopefully you can see and get a feel of what 3D printing is about. OK, so there basically I I'm working with Fansun, which is uh, the 3D printer that belongs to WCD uh, that I'm currently using. And there it shows you in terms of by virtue of a memory card that is inserted with another app used on your computer, you are able to change file formats, uh, which is then inserted into the 3D printer and 3D printer reads it as a G file. And it basically what is happening there is that the extruder there, the printer itself, uh, just operates on coordinates. There you can see some of the, uh, the things that are printed to assist our teachers and, and the learners in our focus schools with regards to uh, furthering the automation process with regards to uh, in this case is the is the uh, the micro bit. OK, so that is a bit of 3D printing. Uh, the next slide uh, has got to do with the Ultimaker, which is Curo, which works in conjunction with Ultimaker Thingiverse which is the firmware I'm currently using to introduce 3D printing to our schools. The next slide is a bit of foundation phase six bricks. I'm, I'm sure you might have heard, you might not have heard about it. OK, I'll, and on another, if we do have the time, I'll most probably be able to expand on that. OK, it is Lego six bricks and there's different colors. Uh, and this is focused on your foundation phase. Uh, they're going to be using uh, six bricks, Lego six bricks, as well as Tangible Africa the Tanks, which was introduced by Professor Hreilin of the Mandela University. Uh, and this is currently used by the unions as well in terms of, of uh, the awareness process that is currently happening where the unions are in fact offering uh, introductory uh, sessions with 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 the foundation phase and our schools in 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 the country itself uh, the other robot that we use in the western cape is is called the rich robot okay i'm going to play the the video for you once more and then as the video is playing i'm going to try and explain to you uh, what the capabilities are with regards to the rich robot So there we have two robots there. Uh, based, basically, they're using the same firmware. OK, they said when I talk about firmware, I'm talking about the microprocessor that is used in both cars. It is just that the functions become different and the possibilities in terms of projects also become different. So that is the my version of the rich robot uh, as we are introducing it. Uh, two schools in in central and as well as in north. OK, and there it gives you an idea of the microprocessor that. Uh, that was earlier mentioned with regards to uh, the firmware used to operate uh, just on your left hand side of that particular slide. Uh, I've given you an example of, you know, what the possibilities are. So, you know, you're basically going to have to go onto your Play Store download whether you're using your phone you're going to have to download uh, the app itself which is app shed and then what opens up now is the possibility of uh, various projects and your pin control and motor control and then of course it leads to the coding uh, in terms of just a comparison with regards to the rich robot compared to your micro bit the rich robot uses a similar format, not quite as integrate and not quite as difficult as Arduino, but it uses a type of line code, you know, where all I've done there was I've programmed certain pins, OK? And in conjunction with that, uh, that particular board has the first four pins designated only for motors. So you can you can 
control. Basically, you can control going forward, going back. You can control turn left, control turn right, because the first four pins are basically only for motors. OK, and then, of course, the rest, which is from pin uh, four, OK, from pin four. And you have to bear with me because, OK, you, you might not know what I'm talking about here, because if you look at the pin structure of that board itself, it is from naught to nine. OK, it's from naught to nine. So for the first four pins, which will be then pin naught, pin one, two, three. OK, and that is designated for motor, for, for motor movement. The next pins are for basically. Uh, we call it binary pins. OK, we call it binary pins because you can use it either as a digital pin or as an analog pin. And basically what happens there is you can control sensors. OK, so you can control sensors. You can have a look at the temperature. You can make the car stop because it picks up sensors. OK, so ultrasonic sensors will work on pins, say from pin four, from pin four to pin nine, and you can be playing around with regards to the reach robot okay so that is also designated more for the primary schools of intermediate phase that is what we are hoping to use there i work in conjunction with the metropoles we work with as timo said earlier we work with the science center and the science center uh, runs programs during the holidays as well. And then, of course, even the competitions are then open to certain schools. Uh, so if you are interested, you could possibly make contact with the Science Center, uh, organize with Teresa there uh, to, you know, visit the, the Science Center and then have a big demonstration on a day for a particular class or a group of learners if you wish to do so. Uh, that being the Rich Robot. OK, then we move on to the micro bit and and the micro bit, ladies and gentlemen, is I think is going to be the order of the day. OK, especially with regards to and why I'm saying that is because of the ease at which learners are going to be able to be able to code specifically. OK, so we're going to move from the coding and we use a certain format of that coding, which is block or blockly as we know it or block coding uh, which is very very colorful and then at the bottom of your screen you can actually see you know if, if you were to download and you you download the app to use the micro bit uh, you you'd see on your left hand side there is your simulator uh, and then in the middle uh, is your library drawer that you're going to be using and then of course like scratch as well you're going to have a workstation. So if you look at the drawing at the bottom, uh, before I play you the video, uh, you can see that is basically what the learners are going to be working with with regards to the make code platform, okay? Uh, which is very, very interesting. So enjoy the, the micro bit. There is a robotic arm that I have developed, which I'm using micro bit to operate. Yeah, that is the robot that I have developed and built using a specific board, an expansion board of the micro bit. And, and the, the fantastic part here is the type of wheel movement that you are able to create. That particular video seg segment there is the ultrasonic sensor, which I will code. And you can see I am able to control that the, that distance between my hand and the, 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 the car itself. So that's just to give you an idea of what the micro bit is capable of. And in all probability, uh, DBE will adopt, you know, that type of resource because you have the liberty of introducing block coding to learners. And then, of course, as as they progress and you want to challenge them a bit more, you are then able to move from Blockly code to the Java or Python uh, code as well. We are not we are not uh, going to push those lines, okay, especially with regards to line coding, okay. And as 
we might mention earlier and shared earlier with you as well is the fact that uh, we, when a child gets to grade nine, the child has been exposed or will would have been exposed to basic block coding, whether it be scratch or whether it be microbit or whether it be code.org. Uh, these are all the platforms that could be used to introduce block coding to children. When they decide that their path is going to be IT or CAT or whatever, that there is where the child will be introduced to line code, whether they're going to be using Arduino or whether they're going to be using a, a Raspberry Pi as an operating system, but those are the possibilities for FET. Uh, I'm going to move on now, ladies and gentlemen, to the next one. And this is this is basically just a video, uh, you know, that I use when I'm presenting. So I'm going to try. I'm not going to show it to you. I'm going to skip that particular slide, okay? Because it it basically just shows you what the possibilities are uh, now with regards to uh, the microbit where. Sensors are used on that microbit, and the accelerometer is used just to show what the possibilities are of coding a car that can be controlled using your hand. Okay, uh, it is not that simple though. Okay, it is not that simple though because what in fact is happening in that process is that we use two microbits. And we code each of them to serve as a remote and then the other one that carries the code and that operates the car but uh, that i can share with you at another stage i mean there's an example of my learners uh, a school in Guguletu that i've spent an afternoon with uh, introducing coding to them and using the microbit uh, this was our expo uh, at Turfel Primary, and there I am basically explaining the movement of the cars to, to certain learners. Then the other thing is, the other possibility is the Arduino and line code. And on your left hand side, you are able to actually see uh, the difference between block, block coding and line coding. And you know, the syntax here is a bit of the concern especially with regards to the introduction of coding and robotics from grade R to grade nine. And, and, and we feel, OK, because we we've tampered the bit and worked with it itself and we looked at what the possibilities are. So, you know, if, if your kids are really good and, and they you want to you want to engage with them on a different level, you know, Arduino is also a possibility. I'll show you the video quick. You see, so the cars, they all look the same, but they're using different apps and different firmware. So by means of my phone, I'm able to create a remote, connect to the car, and, and I'm able to manipulate the movement of the car as well as the sensors that are incorporated onto the car to illustrate coding and, and, and the robotic part thereof. So you know, during the workshops, ladies and gentlemen, you know what I do there is I, you know, I give teachers and I give learners the physical resource to see the difference between the rich robot, the microbit, as well as the Arduino. There, uh, when it comes to drones, okay, this is a drone that I purchased myself, and I'm introducing the drone technology to my schools as well. Uh, the possibilities are I am able to use it with my phone. And I can use my computer as well. Uh, there on your left hand side, you can actually see that uh, normal scratch. In fact, it's not normal scratch, it is scratch specific. Uh, and we're talking about scratch 3.5, uh, which allows you to, to code a particular drone using scratch as an operating system. 
So here we have the uh, the drone technology. Uh, in this case, I am connecting it with my phone, and 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 I'm actually creating a control. So the lift off, the dropping, the hovering, all of that stuff can actually be coded uh, without you being in control. So those are the possibilities in, in, we, in, we, we're going to try and introduce this uh, when it comes to the competitions as well. Uh, because not only do children and learners then uh, develop their skill level, okay, but you can see that it becomes very, very uh, technical where they have to actually fly within parameters, okay, and and land on specific uh, designated areas for for the for the drone itself. And you can see on on both occasions, actually, when I made the video there, I missed it by a couple of a couple of centimeters, but that is the drone technology we are also using. This again, some photographs where learners are uh, actually engaged with the drone technology. There is a girl introducing her code, uh, and that is, of course, the micro bit and explaining what the Blockly code uh, is supposed to do. Again, here it is more the collaboration and you have a group of learners uh, deciding what the, pos the best possible way to solve a problem or a challenge. Uh, here we have a group of learners uh, assembling a car. OK, and then I want you to enjoy this next video, and I'm hoping that <laughs> people are going to not only be able to see it, but also then uh, just year what the new technology is with regards to Hyundai and their development, especially with regards to uh, mobility movement of the of the prototypes that they are still busy with. So what I've done here is I've taken that prototype that they've developed and I've created a car to do similar movements, which I then can teach learners in terms of creating a code and, and we could have most probably the same outcome. So enjoy the, the next video. OK, so here, ladies and gentlemen, is the car that I built and constructed and I did the code with regards to. Uh, showing learners the possibilities of the coding of the car, which does exactly the same movement as the mobility. So there we have the car doing the same movement where it pivots at 360 degrees and then moves in a different direction.
So you have to excuse, ladies and gentlemen, my my skills were not that developed when I did the video, but uh, bear with me. We we eventually got into the parking bay and actually reversed again and then moved off. So uh, a, a bit skew, touched the lines. I don't think I passed on that day, <laughs> but those are the possibilities of creating when we talk about coding. So here we have the last movement, ladies and gentlemen, where we overtake. And I trust that, that you enjoyed that video. Just to give you an idea and get the excitement going with regards to coding and robotics and what the possibilities are, uh, you know, when we in fact engage with young learners and young minds and especially with regards to the collaboration uh, and the possibilities that you know that are there in schools so ladies and gentlemen that is my part of the presentation this afternoon i trust you know you enjoyed it uh, you can you can always make contact with me in terms of if you are interested you want uh, you know your school to get involved you want me to come and do a session with your learners or whatever uh, feel free to do so so the the theme for this year is journey to impact. What does this mean where e-learning is concerned? It is really that e-learning and our technology is the catalytic entrance um, behind everything because it is accelerating positive change to bring about um, our way that we are presenting our lessons, thereby through this, we are adopting innovative teaching methods throughout our education system. But besides this catalytic influence, we also have this convergence that's taking place, where it's the coming together of the various educational strategies and resources for this specific and holistic education transformation. So the catalytic influence is the push bringing about the change and then the convergence is the pulling and the blending and coming together of all of our resources and our strategies and the purpose for all of this is really to develop the creativity that can come across by our teachers and our learners in the way that our teachers can be creative in the way that they present their lessons but besides that our learners' creativity can be sparked because with technology, we are giving our students access not only in the classroom, but beyond the classroom and thereby once again shaping our education holistically. Very important for us is to know that I'll be speaking about the provincial priorities, which is this journey to impact. We've got resources to support us at our schools, but beyond that, we also have another way of supporting our teachers and our learners through the e-portal. If I look at our resources that we have, we have the smart classroom resources a year with our smart classroom some of our schools received it and that would be the data projector the visualizer that's a black thingy with a long arm and that's like our uh, overhead projectors of way back when but this one is one on steroids so that's a visualizer you also have an interactive device you have the teacher um, notebook as well. So that's part of the smart classroom project that is in some of our schools. Not all of our schools received it. This is linked because we have broadband to all of our schools. There's only a handful of, of schools that don't have access to the internet. It depends where that ac access is. 
In some schools, it is throughout the school. Therefore, it is known as the local area network. And with the local area network, what do we have? We have the fact that every second classroom would have connectivity. That could be the schools that have smart classroom equipment. On the other hand, what do we also have? We have the Slim Lab. Yeah, it is more the WAN. That is the wide area network. That is where schools would have access to the admin building and the admin block and the computer room. Those are the two access points that's there. Schools may ask for extend, um, extenders, additional APs. However, ladies and gentlemen, presently, you would have heard the swear word that is part of e-learning this year. That word is budget cuts. And e-learning has been hit the hardest. So yes, we can apply for extra access points, but whether we can get it is going to be another story. And you know, normally at schools, when you see the e-learning guys, you think, oh, we're getting resources. This time around, because of the budget cuts, the e-learning people would be coming to your school and instead of you standing with open um, palms facing upwards saying, what can we get? We will be coming and saying, what can we get from your school to give to another school that don't have? What is there at your school that you know your teachers are not using? that another school could have. So that is the problem that we're having now with our land. So if you had smart classroom equipment and that is still in the safe, being kept very safe from everyone, and you know that it's not being used, contact us so that we can actually spread our resources so that more schools would be able to have access to the broadband or to connectivity. We also have at schools benefactor projects. What does that mean? We had schools receiving tablets from Stats SA, and so that was about 40 or 30 or 25 tablets coming to your school. How are those tablets being used? We'd like to know. Your e-learning advisors would be coming to your school to find out a little bit more about this. These stats essay were um, tablets that was used during the survey by South Africa, what is happening. And now the surveys are gone and dusted and they very kindly donated to the education department and we then gave to, to certain schools. We also have the USO. Some of us have not been using, oops, sorry, our, our USO tablets um, effectively and some of those batteries have expanded and swelled and they also very nicely packed away in their charging um, trolleys but you received tablets that could have been used. Also, Benefactor project would be our coding and robotics. You heard that some schools received reach robots and micro bits, etc. Then part of our projects as well for our foundation phase, we have the grade R to three tablets as well. So you see, there, there definitely are resources that needs to be used. Please, committee members, e-learning champions, SMT principals, whoever is in our meeting, go and find where these resources are. 
encourage the staff to make use of it. By the way, we do hope that you are using it in your classroom so that you are the model of the person that is using technology to integrate technology and pedagogy in your lessons to enhance your lesson and to engage your students. And then we also have tablets that is part of the Back on Track program. So ladies and gentlemen, these are the resources that you have at your school access to connectivity. We also do have other third parties coming on board like um, Frogfoot or Vumatal, any of those that are assisting schools to get connectivity. I, any questions thus far? I'll check in the chat or in our question and answers. In the meantime, we could also have of our e-learning advisors that's in our session to just uh, go over and check and see if we could answer your questions there. Our infrastructure provided by the department would be broadband and connectivity to our schools. We do have that we have certain schools being used by the community because Helen Zilla at the time wanted to really make sure that our connectivity and exposure to technology is there even for our communities. And some schools have actually leveraged that where they opening it up to the community where they could come to after hours to fill in the forms, for example, with our um, admissions. That has been happening now. We also have where they're coming in to complete other type of forms to help them with, with job applications. So yes, having that, it could be a nightmare at some schools, but the, it was coming from a good point. Right, then part of what we have is the e-portal and the teacher sidekick as a way of supporting our teachers. Our e-portal is our one-stop support spot. <laughs> I like that. For our teachers, where you'd be able to find different resources and information. You know what, teachers? A lot of us have been using the e-portal, but do you know how rich the e-portal is where our resources are concerned? Let me just... Stop sharing this screen. There we go. And I want to mouse over onto the e portal. So I'm going to share again. Right. So on the e portal, what will you be seeing? This is the important parts. When was did you actually click on the e portal and go? beyond the bit where you'd be going for your, your ATPs and the assessment that's there. Most of us stop at this point where we know we can get our lessons and curriculum support as well as the telematics. But did you check out the Funda one day that's there to support our teachers or our telematics? Look at all the videos that's at your uh, disposal. What's the word? That word, yes. We often come over to our lessons. But, but, but look what is available to our learners. We have our online library. If you click on the online library, especially for the foundation phase, you could be using it like your big book. Click on these and your learners have access to various books, all ages, all levels. So if you are trying to fill the gap, let your students come to this point. The library is there for them to, to use. Where did I go? I went into the learners for that. Look at, they have access to the DBE, the rainbow books. That is for the, and you know what? Here for the learners, they have 
subject specific, grade specific information to assist them for their learning. Teachers expose, go back to school and alert the other teachers to what's happening here. And learning should be fun. I like this part here where they said, let's have fun. There's games that our students can be playing. Look there, how we can learn maths in a fun way. Look at all of these puzzles. If you click on that, there's a plethora of puzzles that our teachers can use. Come now, get our kids all back to the whole fun way of learning. Even access to coding and robotics would be in this area as well. This was under the learners access. You would go into, I'm not going to go into all of this. I'd like you to click on these. You see, parents can also go and support their students in this way. What are the parents' responsibilities? You know, they come to us and we babysitting sometimes. But here's a good link that we can send home in our newsletters or taking bits and pieces out of that. Inclusive education can be supported. How do we involve our teachers, our learners? Look at all of the sets there. The guidelines go over. Now, now we're talking. Did you see all the support that is there for you? And the e-learning, I'm just running out of time, but all of these are like, wow. Just look if I click on digital tools, eh? Now we often say, I haven't got time to go and sort out. Why do you have to go and spend time? It is here for you. Look at this. Just look at this. Digital content creation. You want to create content that would be wow. You don't know where to start. Come over here. Go and see. I don't know how many of you played around in Canva. Go and check out Canva. If you register Canva and you register for the education ones, you are going to be blown away. How about making your videos wow? Check Spark. Do you know about Genially? Please go and check this out, teachers. Then, sometimes we don't have access to so much, eh? But technology can help us. How? If we go over onto simulations, teachers, we are, look at this that is at your disposal. Go to fit. Use it in your classroom. It is there for you. I'm not going to check, um, click on it. Or maybe just quickly. Did you know what is there for you? If you click, go and play around. Go and explore all of these. Look at the different topics. If you click the languages, the interactive, look how many is there. And then you don't have to go and reinvent the wheel. Teacher submitted lessons. So please go and check what is there for you. Okay, go and play around, teachers. Go and play around. I'm not going. Gamification. How can, you know how, how the, 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 the students, even teachers enjoy Kahoot? Did you go and play around in there? Did you go and register a class? Make learning fun for our students. So this is all on the e-portal teacher sidekick. What is at the teacher sidekick? You've got tech support. As the e-learning or the e-committee and the e Champions, this is very, very important. There's going to be lots of questions coming your way. Go over to this area where you'd be able to have all of this how to. There's a whole lot. If you click on the self-service, 
This will be taking you to the school's IT website. When you go into the school's IT, you're going to have access to all of these how-tos that teachers often come to you and think you are the fountain of all knowledge. Come over to this site to help you. The sidekick is there to help us. So where did I come to sidekick? I've got so many things open right now. Right, when you come to the sidekick, your teacher digital learning. This is an awesome site. The remote learning and teaching for our this teachers, this ladies and gentlemen is where you must go to. Take note of the site, our Wixit site. Creating content, for example, if you click on there, you would have access to, to all of these. Very, very important. Please go over to the site. And then I am going to go back to our PowerPoint. And I'm going to share the screen again with everyone. I hope I've wet your appetite into what is available to you out there. And that will just be on the district side. Please go over to the e-portal. Please, please, please go and check the sidekick that is there for you. You are the heroes. Our students look up to you. Bring in the technology into your lesson. You don't have to reinvent the wheel. The sidekick is there to help you. Thank you very much. Colleagues, yes, um, quickly we'll just go through the ETPD, that is your e-learning teacher professional development, and that speaks to the transformation agents at schools and the adoption and transformation pathway as well. And then lastly, we'll have a look at the MCO green shoots for grade three to nine. So colleagues, let me just see, here we go. So in terms of e-learning teacher professional development, as always, the sessions are sent to the school and there's a document that comes to the school. Your principal normally gets it and they will send it out to the staff members, either in the WhatsApp groups or admin groups, and you will there find a pre-register for the sessions. Why do we send you this, colleagues? So that if you are pre-registered for a session, you will receive a reminder closer to the time that the session will be hosted. Secondly, the advocacy of the e-learning teacher profession development at school, that basically falls on the e-champion at the school. It's your job to make sure that the teachers are fully aware of the sessions that will be hosted. You need to make sure that you find creative ways of letting teachers know or your colleagues know what sessions will be hosted. So you can do this, and I've seen this at some schools. You walk in and you will see a QR code close to the sign in book. If you scan the QR code, you will see the training sessions that will be hosted. So you can do it with a QR code or you can just see the link within the groups. Another task of the e champion at the school is the communication. So you are the communicator between the e advisor and the school. You will be the one to find out. When will the session be happening? You will make sure that the principal is forwarding the information about the upcoming sessions as well. So you will play the little middle, not the middleman, but you will be the communicator between the two parties so that the school is always informed of training sessions that's upcoming. And then colleagues, at the end of each term, we do what we refer to as reporting. So we'll inform the school. This is the list of 50 teachers at your school that has attended the following sessions so that your principal is also aware of the fact that you are actively engaging in upskilling yourself and you are also committed to ensuring that you develop yourself. Then. Colleagues, our latest addition to e-learning or a new term that we use these days is transformation agents. So. The transformation agent 
has different levels and you become a transformation agent or you can become one by making contact with your e-advisor and they will advise you on what you need to do to ensure that you become a transformation agent at your school. So you will see on the screen, colleagues, these different badges over there. So we always ask the question after attending a session, oh, so what now? I've attended the session. Sometimes I get the certificate, sometimes I don't. Sometimes I get the thank you email for attending the certificate. Colleagues, by becoming a transformation agent, after you have attended the session and you have signed the register, you will be allocated a spark. After some time, after attending a number of sessions, you will be accumulating different sparks so you have your first spark and if as soon as you have your first spark then you are then enabled to support your fellow educators at the school and as soon as you have two sparks colleagues by attending the sessions and I'll, I'll get to the different type of sessions now once you have two sparks you are able to do virtual sessions so you'll become a virtual facilitator you'll do a session like this for instance on something that you on an attending session that we will assist you with once you are a transformation agent. If you have three sparks, you are then a transformation agent and you will be used to train different at different schools and not only at your own school. And you might be wondering what is the purpose of being a transformation agent colleagues? Because we've had trainers the whole time, but now you are still a trainer. The only difference is you are doing it now in a more system placed, not a system place, in a more system orientated environment so that your sessions can be recorded. The district will call on you if we need someone to present a certain app that you have been using. Right. Then we we'll just move on to the next one, the adoption and transformation pathway. Just going to get all of these on the screen. So the ICT adoption strategy is aimed at creating a transformational pathway, colleagues. The adoption strategy, that is a course that you do, and that course literally allows you to plan the pathway for your school to help your school to become very equipped in the digital skills. So what happens is you do the course, and you start attending sessions that you are able to literally use in your classroom. You will be able to apply it and integrate it into your classroom. Once you've done that, you will move over to capacitating your management. So you must always ensure colleagues that you get the input of your SMT and the buy-in of the SMT because the SMT is the people that will filter down to the rest of the teachers. So once the SMT has been capacitated and you've given them training and you've shown them what can be done with the adoption strategy and what you have learned there, it moves over to becoming a digital skill that the school will now incorporate into their lessons. So the teachers will move away from textbook teaching or blackboard teaching. They will now start using e-learning within the subject and ensuring that they make the text become alive. And then colleagues, before we run out of time, I still have two minutes left. With regards to green shoots, colleagues, green shoots, the main objective of green shoots is to improve the performance of math at the school. So what we are trying to do as the advisors, we're trying to get as many as possible schools to register for green shoots. You need to keep in mind that you do need a device. So if your school has a lab that works perfectly fine, please try to steer away from using the cell phones for green shoots because it just doesn't do it justice. So what you would do to become part of green shoots is you would register your school. And by registering your school, you will then be placed in contact with your e-advisor and as well as a contact person at Green Shoots, who will then assist you with the further registration, such as uploading your learners' names and CMOS numbers, because with Green Shoots, each learner is allocated their own profile, which will assist you in keeping track and reporting on the learner's progress. So for grade three to seven, that is curriculum based and grade eight and nine will then have a math quiz, which is just revision based on the work that they have done already. So you use green shoots and incorporate it into your timetable and make it part of your lesson. 
So just to give a brief overview again of Green Shoots, it provides you with digital weekly exercises that is aligned with the curriculum. And there's also downloadable resources for you as a teacher. And the best part is the report on progress and the report on the completion of the tasks that learners are assigned to. Colleagues, I know I ran through it a bit, but we are running out of time and we don't want to keep you too long. Thank you, colleagues.